Jagmeet Singh, the federal NDP leader, is speaking. Let's listen in. Safety committee to look at other steps we can take to keep Canadians safe. We'll, we will also urge Canada to ban the RSS, which is a right-wing extremist militant group from India that has branches in other countries, including in Canada, that promotes violence and division. We'll also urge Canada to impose severe and strict sanctions on Indian diplomats. We need to take every step possible to keep Canadians safe. The RCMP has exposed a very serious threat. And now let's take that threat seriously and act accordingly. Ce que la GRC a partagé est, est vraiment inquiétant. C'est really vraiment troublant. Worrying. It's ils troubling. ont effectivement, they, ils ont dit qu'il y a un mouvement étranger. They said there's a foreign government that is using criminal elements in Canada to, to threaten Canadians, to uh, bring some shootouts in houses in companies. And it's a threat, not only for the Canadians that are tar targeted, but for everyone who lives in, in these communities. I love my country. I love our democracy. I want to do everything I can do to defend our country and our democracy. I can't imagine why uh, a political leader it doesn't agree with this approach. That's why I uh, require for Pierre Poilievre to take his security code to know what's happening because we don't want that the Indian government, which are the allegations that have been brought to the government of Modi, that the government of India thinks that there's a political leader that wants to look elsewhere. That's not ready to take seriously what's happening. We have to be together to um, say that the Modi government and the Indian government is not doing its share. And we're going to ask for an emergency meeting with the Committee of Public Security to know if there's other steps that we can do to protect Canadians. Secondly, uh, we uh, require from the Liberal government to do the to do some sanctions on Indian diplomats and to have an organization um, that is uh, of the violent factions of India, uh, terrorist factions of India, a group that works here and in other countries also. Thank you. Tell us the briefing you received yesterday. The briefing confirmed what was shared publicly, uh, that this is a very serious uh, allegation a series of allegations. It confirmed some of the, the background on how we got here. Uh, but really what it, it highlighted is that we've got the Indian government, specifically the Modi government, that is engaged through diplomats in Canada, criminal elements that have then gone on to, to shoot at Canadian homes, to shoot at Canadian businesses, to kill Canadians. And that is very serious. As the RCMP mentioned, the briefing also mentioned that there are deep concerns for Canadian safety. And that's why I really believe it is our responsibility. If we believe in protecting our country, I love this country, we need to do everything possible to keep people safe and to keep our democracy safe. And that's why I'm committed to the actions that I've laid out, additional steps to see what we can do to keep Canadians safe by having an emergency meeting of the Public Safety Committee, as well as making sure that we, we take steps to ban this extremist organization, the RSS, that comes from India, as well as making sure that we, in, we impose these severe sanctions on, on Indian diplomats. Are you being targeted? It's not about me. This is about the fact that Canadians are at, at serious threat and serious risk. Uh, what the RCMP described is something that should be really troubling. When these acts of violence happen, if someone's shooting, if a, a, an organized member of crime is being hired or being engaged by a diplomat, which just sounds just incredibly disturbing, if that's happening, that threatens everyone that lives in that community, everyone that lives in that neighborhood. When businesses are being shot at, anyone that lives nearby, anyone that's walking nearby, this is a threat to all Canadians, and it should be taken with the utmost seriousness. Mr. Singh, quand même la question de ma collègue est pertinente. Vous, est-ce que vous êtes ciblé? Puis en sous-question, si on prend 
un pas de recul, il y a la commission sur les Take a step back on the commission of foreign uh, interference in the uh, interim report that we've brought. You're targeted, you're not named by the faction of the Indian government. Do you have some worries uh, in face of the next election? And what would you like to see of changes and to measures to be brought? First of all, like I said in English, it's not me. It's the security of people across the country. And I take uh, seriously this threat. It's a threat on the safety of Canadians. When there's some shooting, it's targeting one person in house. It's not only the fact that a Canadian is targeted, it's all the people that live in the surroundings. And all the, it's the city that is targeted. So it's really worrying. I take this very seriously. And I think that's what the RCMP shared. And what I want to see with the public inquiry, as I said uh, many times, I want that we do the necessary work and we put in place some steps, some stages to protect our democracy, the safety of Canadians. So that is essential. The work is important. And I want to know what are the recommendations. And it's uh, fundamental that we put in place these recommendations. Do you think that maybe the election will be uh, very uh, soon, maybe before the report, more concretely? There are things that you'd like to see that was brought before the next election. A few elements that I just said today, because in this case, with the RCMP uh, is shared, it's the government of India that has been targeted. So the, uh, the question, the diplomats, that uh, we brought some uh, criminal elements to perpetuate violence, and that's why what we can do immediately. We have some strict uh, sanctions on the Indian diplomats and consider how we can use what we've heard in the public inquiry to bring some uh, changes uh, quickly, soon. And that's why I'm saying, and I repeat it, we are really serious when we say that the work is necessary to know what are the recommendations and the work uh, that uh, as much as we can to bring some changes. You're one of the most prominent state Canadians in this country. It would be notable if there have been. I, I've, as I've said before, I, it's not about me. I, I really want this to be about the safety and security of Canadians. And what the RCMP laid out is, is deeply concerning. And, and just to get a, an idea, when we see the uptake of violence that we saw in the past year, and there was a serious uptake, people talked to me about that. They felt that there was increased shootings. The fact that a portion of those shootings can be attributed to the fact that an, a foreign government engaged criminal elements in our country to shoot up Canadian homes, to shoot up Canadian businesses, like this puts everyone at risk. This doesn't just put those people targeted. You've got guns, uh, you've got bullets flying. And that's going to put everyone that lives nearby at risk. And so this is very, very serious. And, and it goes very deep, the fact that the RCMP has laid out that, that diplomats from the Indian government were involved in hiring and directing criminal organized crime members in Canada is deeply serious. And it should be taken with the utmost seriousness. And that's why I've got to say again, uh, I find it troubling that the only federal leader in our country right now that has not gotten security clearance to hear about foreign interference is Pierre Polyev. I don't want the Indian government to think that there's one political leader willing to look the other way when this serious level of allegations are being put forward. And that's why I'm urging him to put partisanship aside, get the security clearance, know what's going on, let's have a united front. Let's be together on the same side against the Modi government, against the Indian government that's putting Canadian lives at risk. On the issue, that's what he says. He won't, he won't get the clearance because he wants to be able to speak freely. Since you've received the clearance, do you feel hindered at all? Do you feel you're able to speak freely about foreign interference? Absolutely. I've spoken freely. I've disagreed. Uh, after I received the, the briefing, I disagreed with the finding of the special rapporteur. If folks remember, he came with a certain conclusion. I read the, the documents in that case, and I came up with a different conclusion, and I rejected what the special rapporteur had said. And so uh, there is no, th that, that's, a, that's a false allegation. That is a false thing that Mr. Polyev is saying. 
that that somehow will limit. I've been able to say anything I need to say that that focuses on protecting Canadians, and that should be the priority. A leader should have in their mind the utmost and most important thing is country first, protecting our country, protecting Canadians. I can only think that he's making the decision for partisan reasons, and I'm urging him to put partisanship aside. We've just heard from the RCMP that Canadians are being targeted. Canadians are being shot at. Their homes are being shot at. Their businesses are being shot at. They're being extorted. And it directly is being, is being alleged, it is directly being orchestrated by Indian government officials. Knowing that, I can't imagine why anyone who is a leader in our country, wouldn't want to get every piece of information possible. There is a reason why every other federal leader has agreed to look at that, those documents, has agreed to get the security clearance. And that's why I'm deeply troubled that Pierre Polyev wants to be the only federal leader in a time when we have active threats against Canadians, that he wants to be the only leader that doesn't want to look at what's going on. That does send a message to the Indian government that there's one leader that's willing to look away. That to me is deeply troubling. We're gonna. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? We're gonna. It's hard to figure has, out. Yes or no, Mr. Singh? Has the RCMP warned you uh, that you are being targeted by India or that there are threats against you? Yes or no? I think Canadians would be interested to know if there is a political leader in Canada being targeted. So I know you don't want to talk about yourself, but has the RCMP warned you? As I've said, I, it's not about me. I mean, the RCMP putting forward. The seriousness of what they've described yesterday should be enough for us all to be very worried. And, and uh, talking about myself does not in any way help Canadians to realize what the RCMP talked about, what they've shared, the allegations they put forward, the threats to Canadians, the threat to Canadian lives, the threat to Canadian homes and businesses, uh, the fact that there's extortion going on. This is serious. And, and I want to focus on the fact that this is a threat to Canada, threat to our democracy, threat to Canadian lives. And that's something we take seriously. An opposition party being targeted in a democracy is serious, Mr. Singh. And yes, collaborating with the United States, but not with Canada. What does that tell you about this? I think that we have to work together with our allies. It's a something that's happening not only in Canada. Uh, you mentioned the United States, but uh, there's an investigation that's happening right now. So it's something that's uh, going on right now with the United States. And there are some situations also that are happening. Uh, in the United Kingdom. So I think it's important for Canada to work together with our, the, ally, the allies and to bring the investigation on India. I think the different approach with, uh, of India with the United States, I don't know why, but it's important for Canada to use the allies to defend our democracy, our sovereignty as a country and the citizens of Canada. I'll do that in English because I did promise you yeah. anything. Okay. And then I'll take one more question. Um, what, um, what, what's been brought up, uh, the fact that this is uh, there's ongoing similar scenarios in other countries. There's an ongoing investigation right now as we speak in, in the United States. Uh, as folks saw in public discourse, there is a, a targeting and attempted assassination of an American. Uh, and of course, America is taking that very seriously. And this highlights how important it is for Canada to work with our allies, to work with the United Kingdom, to work with the United States, uh, to protect our democracy, to protect our sovereignty, to protect Canadian citizens. I'll take one more question. The the sanctions sanctions that you are putting saying, forward, I want to ask answer. about the sanctions that you want to put forward. How do you balance that against Canada's economic interests and suggesting severe sanctions when that would have potentially devastating effects uh, in Canada's economy? I thank you for the opportunity to clarify. I mentioned very severe sanctions on, on Indian diplomats. Uh, Policy. So specifically on the diplomats, given the fact, I mean, let's just take a moment. We got the RCMP that said that Indian diplomats hiring criminal elements to shoot at Canadians. Pretty serious. And given how serious that is, I can't see why we would do anything other than put in place severe sanctions on those diplomats, on Indian diplomats. Given their 
the allegations that they were involved in, in basically getting folks to shoot at Canadians at their homes, at their businesses. So yeah, we've got to take very serious measures, but we should also work in collaboration with our allies. There are similar circumstances. There is uh, an attempted assassination that's linked to the Indian government in the United States. We need to, of course, work with the United States. There's similar scenarios that have uh, played out in the United Kingdom. So it's clear that we need to work with our allies to put pressure on India, but there's got to be accountability. The Indian government has to be held to account. The Modi government has to be held to account. And we all need to be unified as Canadian leaders. All of us have to be united in denouncing Modi and making sure we protect Canadians and put their safety first and foremost. Thank you so much.